so to hold. Got some embossing on it. I think it's a blob. This is a holy grail. This is the second example ever found, you guys. I'm on Pearl Street in Yankton, South Dakota. The house behind me was built in 1902, although an 1875 map shows an earlier structure in the vicinity. So it's likely there's artifacts buried back here from both eras. I got permission to excavate the grounds, so we'll see how it goes. Well, I was told the place was built in 1902. Some of the features indicate it could be a bit earlier. I know the window moldings are something you'd typically see on an 1870s or 1880s house. I'm on the south side of the property and pushed a probe rod through, hit a few things. This pit is big, I'm thinking eight feet long, maybe three or four feet wide, just loaded. We'll get this thing opened up. Being this pit was so big, I decided to dig a test hole. And I'm absolutely blown away. About four feet down, I hit this 1870s blob top soda bottle and a pond hill base. Now they stopped using pontils around the time of the Civil War. This is absolutely amazing. This could actually be one of the oldest pits in the Dakotas. some kind of ironstone pitcher here. This thing might be whole. The handle's intact. Let's see. Stuff around it. Wow. I think we're in an extremely early pit here. That's gotta be 1870s. Another one. Look at that. Look at that thin lip. I was pulling up stuff like this on an early military fort. This is incredible. It's intact. <laughs> Look at that. All oh, the bottoms knocked out. Okay. But no, this is so early. You know, I wonder if a boarding house was run out of here. I've hit a ton of utilitarian pieces. We're getting into some deeper layers and working on this plate. Looks like we could have a soda and maybe a citrate of magnesia bottle. I know uh, the plate looks plain, but sometimes these get under here. Have embossing on the bottom. This is an early mark. Wow, let's see. Stone China warranted. Anthony Shaw, Burslem. When you see that black stamping, that's always earlier. I think they switched to blue probably sometime in the 1880s. Now, this is kind of hard packed, still in a cap layer, so gotta be careful. Wow. Okay, it's a citrate of magnesia bottle. It looks like it either has some contents or some kind of uh, groundwater in it. It's a tooled top, I believe. That was the soda hole. Got some embossing on it. I think it's a blob. Oh, the 
is a Hasselton beer. This is a Holy Grail. This is the second example ever found, you guys. This is one of the greatest bottles I've ever dug. <laughs> On the back, I believe these were returnable. Yankton Bottling Works. This is uh, Yankton, Dakota Territory. Almost every single one of these was returned, you guys. Look at that, DT, Dakota Territory. <laughs> Mission complete. This corner is looking good. I've got all kinds of stuff here. Uh, what do we have? Another uh, Philadelphia Oval style prescription drugstore bottle. Amazing age. What do we have here? That's really something. Okay, I've dug these before, but these are always found in extremely early pits. It's gotta be 1870s. It's a pipe bowl, clay pipe bowl. See here, it's like a canning jar lid. Oh wow. Okay, uh, CFJ. I think that's the uh, Consolidated Fruit Jar Company, if I remember correctly. Again, extremely early. We have here a little uh, homeopathic vial. Uh, Would have held little pills, uh, powders of some sort. All right. Yeah, the layers are super soft down here. I'm into some seeds. I think that uh, confirms we're in an old outhouse pit. This is a French square style prescription bottle. And another vial. These things are never embossed. They would have always had a paper label on them. Oh, hey intact. It's a tumbler, a jelly jar, I believe, of some sort. It's a uh, pressed glass. Right, oh, another, uh, Philadelphia Oval, made by Whittle Tatum and Company. Excelsior Drugstore, Purdy and Brecht, Yankton, Dakota Territory. Wow, this is one of the earliest embossed prescription bottles in the Dakotas. This is a big pit. I'm just getting into a use layer. There's all kinds of stuff down here. Let's see. Okay, we got a Philadelphia oval style prescription bottle. That's early, gotta be 1870s, 80s. Oh, that is so early. It's a broken pickle bottle, but if you look on the bottom, it's got a, it's either a key mold or a hinge mold. This type of manufacturing was out of production by about 1880. Oh, wow. Look at this thing. It's a pocket flask with a threaded top. It's uh, round. You know, it wasn't meant to sit on a table. It was meant to just sit in someone's saddle or uh, pocket. Oh, hey, a shoe fly flask, tooled top that's 1870s, 1880s. Still not even through the cap layer. Look at all this stuff. Some embossing on this. I don't even know what that is. This thing's like a Jolly Rancher green. I'll go with, uh, let's see. I'll go with the cologne first. It always has this little shape to them. What is it? Uh, got a lot of writing on it. Head, Head at low and brothers, perfumers. Philadelphia, never heard of it. Could have been a cologne or a perfume, I suppose. And uh, another little homeopathic vial. There's a lot of these things here. And uh, this I gotta be careful with. I have no idea. I've never seen one of these before. It's intact. 
Wow. Bjorngard Druggist, Red Wing, Minnesota. That's amazing. That's gotta be 1870s, 1880s. Got a monogram. This thing has a lot going for it. What's going on with this? Bordeaux? Jessica <laughs> and Company? I, I don't even know. I think it's French. But uh, no, this is really something. It's that green color. And uh, yeah, it must be some kind of imported product. A little. Uh, Another vial. This one's a little longer than the other ones. There we go. Excelsior Drugstore, Yankton. That's a uh, Yankton, Dakota territory. This might be the smallest size this company made. And another little homeopathic vial. This one has a wider lip. I think this is the smallest one we've dug of these. It's a. Uh, Either a machine made or a free blown thing. Oh, wow, what's that? We got a couple things here. Oh, Hoyt's German Cologne, W. Hoyt and Company, Lowell, Massachusetts. I also find these in early pits across the Dakotas. There's <laughs> a bottle in it. Uh, no embossing. It's a little uh, French Square prescription drugstore bottle. Now this thing is really cool. You know what? It's not broken. I was thinking the handle was missing, but that's just the way this thing was made. It's got that green line pattern. There's no markings on the bottom. Looks like some kind of prescription bottle and another one of these vials. And it's, these ones have the wider lip on them, so that's earlier. The lip got smaller as the years went on for some reason, just a difference in manufacturing. And let's see here. This pick keeps going. All right, another uh, Purdy and Brecht Yankton Dakota Territory prescription bottle. Looks like plenty of contents in there. Could be camphor oil, linseed oil, something along those lines. Huh. New London. Okay. Uh, Dr. Thompson's Eye Water. That's uh, New London, Connecticut. Let's see. Dr. Thompson's kind of embossed all along the edge there. Yeah, Connecticut, so that's an 1870s, 80s bottle. Okay, and a Philadelphia Oval prescription bottle. No embossing on this one. This stuff in here. Got a, a French square style uh, prescription drugstore bottle, no embossing. Oh, some kind of a ball neck panel piece. Wow, this stuff's early. That's a, again, 1870s, 1880s. Another little vial. This glass is so thin. I think these only survived because they're so small. Oh, 
It's like a, I think this is a mustache comb. Sometimes these have writing on them. It's an early rubber. Uh, got a bunch of rust, so I'm not sure if we'll be able to read it. It's a comb, something in J Company. I don't know if you guys can read that. It's a, got a few broken bristles, otherwise could still be used. Another little homeopathic vial, same style. This pit's getting deep. It's still giving. Let's see here. Got a broken drinking glass. It was. Uh, looks like it was for alcoholic drinks, maybe liquor of some sort. Druggist, yanked in Dakota Territory. It's got a little W and a diamond. That's beautiful. It's a Millville Round style. This is really something. Look at that shape. It's uh, some kind of perfume bottle. The diamond pattern with the diamond cleating. Never seen one like that before. And another drinking glass. Uh, no stamping on it. This one looks mint. It's uh, fairly heavy. Finally made it into the use layer. This thing's loaded. We got it's all kinds of bottles. What's going on with this thing? It's a aqua piece. Looks earlier. Uh, tooled top. It's a French square style. And this thing, I think, has an applied top. Oh yeah, and a key mold bottom. This thing's super early. That's 1870s for sure. We got a, I think this is a knife edge, so a true uh, cough and whiskey flask. Would have held liquor, like brandy, whiskey. Oh, hey, a pipe bowl. It's kind of like, almost like Meerschaum pipe. Uh, the stem's broken off. bottles everywhere down here. We've got a French square style uh, prescription bottle, no embossing. Look at all these. I've got a couple of them here that are kind of wedged together. have embossing on this one. Uh, could be a shoe polish or a salad dressing. Uh, no embossing actually. Another Excelsior drugstore bottle from Yankton, Dakota Territory. That's before South Dakota was a state.
this is a really early one. It's a little uh, French square. No glass company marks. A really thin lip on this thing. Solid use layer. If you see all those specks there, those are undigested seeds. We're definitely digging in an old outhouse pit. Little oval bottle, tooled top, no embossing, likely a patent medicine of some sort. A little uh, French square style. Wow, these are getting early. Look at that little prescription, that thin lip on it. On ink, sometimes these have the company name marked on the bottom. That's a key mold. This thing's super early, got some great rainbow iridescence on it. Little uh, homeopathic vial. beer. Maybe a, oh, it's a canning jar, I think. Yeah. Oh, wow, it's actually intact. Wow, that's an old oldie. It's a ground lip. Mark of the Consolidated Fruit Jar Company. This has got to be one of the first mason jars made. Wow. Let's see here. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, some kind of a bar glass, uh, liquor glass of some sort. I think it's pressed glass, and this is in great shape. There we go. Another uh, Purdy and Brecht from Yankton, Dakota Territory. That's a Philadelphia Oval style. I think we've got a chalice. It's about ready. There's all kinds of stuff in this corner. I found bottom. Look at that. It's a pressed glass chalice. Uh, the top chipped, so they threw it down, but that's really cool. I like that shape. What do we have here? Okay, another Hoyt's German Cologne from Massachusetts. Looks like they uh, broke the top, prying the cork out. Okay, a little ground lip. Uh, oh, it says something on the bottom. Richards Manufacturing Company patented. So I don't know if this is a salt or pepper shaker. Uh, could have had a product in it. May have remnants of a paper label, but I can't say for sure. We have here a little. Uh, Homeopathic vial. Another one of these. We're gonna have a full size lineup. Now, this thing looks super early. Wow. That's a key mold. This was an incredibly early flask. That's solid 1870s. This is right on bottom. Lamp chimney. Oh, hey. Looks like a soap dish. JG Meekin, Hanley, England. Could be like a little serving platter as well. There's no design on these, just plain whiteware. 
in the final corner of this thing, down bottom, uh, all the sides. Another one of these little vials. Makes me wonder what kind of pills these folks were taking. This pit's done. Here's the hall. This was something else. Got a variety of stuff. A bunch of those homeopathic files, possible salt and pepper shaker, uh, shoe polish, that Yankton beer, blob soda, a couple pipes, cologne bottles, uh, citrate, some medicines, an ink, a bunch of prescription drugstore bottles, including those Yankton Dakota Territory ones and that Minnesota one. Got some liquor flasks, some chalices, glasses, mason jar, and a pitcher. This was a great excavation. We'll get this thing filled back in. Here's the back of the house. It's definitely been remodeled and has possibly had some additions put on. The backyard seems fairly wide open. There's a shed and a couple of trees in the way, but right over there, I kicked some marks in the ground. I believe we might have a pit. There's some glass and stove ashes down there. That's a good indicator of an early site. We'll get it opened up. through the topsoil. Looks like we might have an ink something. Oh wow, that's a beauty. It's a uh, Carter's ink with an 1897 stamp on the bottom. Wow. That looks like a Mikado style. No, my bad, an Olympia flask. That's an 1898 patent. like a shoe polish bottle. This is early machine made. I'd put this at about 1910. Wow. Look at that. It's a pitcher of some sort. It's got a really cool spiral type design on it. This thing's old, I'd say it's at least 120 years. Wow, look at that design. That's Flow Blue right there. That's uh, English transfer wear from the turn of the century. That's a really nice color. Let's see here. Looks like a black glass almost, maybe an English type piece. What do we have here? Oh wow, a big old champagne bottle. Looks like it's a turn mold piece, has some beautiful iridescence. Looks like a shoe polish bottle, tooled top. This is getting earlier. I'd put this at the 1890s. kind of toiletry product, I believe. No embossing on it, but again, that's circa 1895. Some kind of prescription bottle. No embossing, circa 1900 on this one. This 
pit is loaded. Circa 1905 prescription bottle. Oh, there we go. Oh, three piece mold whiskey, circa 1900. What is this thing? Oh, wow. Dr. Shoop's Family Medicine, Racine, Wisconsin. That's really something. It's a tooled top circa 1905. This one was sticking out of the side. This is an opium vial. You guys, wow. This would've been a personal dose of opium back in the day, which was the standard painkiller. Another prescription bottle made by the Western Bottle Manufacturing Company. And another, uh, no markings on this one. Now, this thing's wedged in here. Another prescription bottle, no markings, circa 1905. This could really be something an old pitcher. Generally these things are broken, although it seems to be intact. What do we have here? <laughs> Look at that! That's amazing! It's a uh, pressed glass. This is really something. It's well over 120 years old, probably late 1800s. Getting into a use layer, there's stuff all over the place. I saw this one with some writing on it. Whitmore, Boston, USA. That was a really popular shoe polish back in the day. Had a cold cream container lid. Sometimes these have company names on them. This one doesn't. Some kind of tool top prescription bottle. No embossing. Another, some of these need to start being embossed. This is from the Western Bottle Manufacturing Company. Oh, hey, it's intact. Got a mason jar. It's a ball. Uh, isn't the drop day or the triple loop. Uh, it's a shoulder seal style. this chemical company dad chemical company no other embossing on this thing I've never seen one before this could have held hydrogen peroxide or something along those lines an Olympia style flask no embossing these have an 1898 patent on bottom. Well, here we go. It's a little pharmaceutical product. It's a sharp druggist lip, it's amber. That's interesting. You usually don't see this style in that color. No end in sight. See some embossing on this. I think I feel some stuff underneath it. What do we have? Lowell, Massachusetts. Okay, Ayers. Oh wow, an Ayers Sarsaparilla. This is an old bottle here. Uh, I'd put this at about 1890. It's patent medicine. Looks like some kind of ball neck panel style. No embossing. What's this thing? Top to a bottle and a little uh, teacup to a kid's tea set. Looks mint. Oh, that, that's really something. <laughs> what? Oh, whoa! This is a container. Now look, there's still some contents inside of it. I don't know if there's any uh, embossing. There's no embossing on it. But look at that. It was just laying side by side. Not very often you find them uh, whole, whole pieces. I dug this down to bottom. 
and found a few more pieces, but I think it's just about over. It's a little one. Uh, Van Stans Stratina. I've dug these here in Yankton before. These are usually in earlier pits. This is likely an 1880s bottle. It's like a tooled top Olympia style flask. Like a mason jar lid or, you know, I'm not entirely sure on this one. There's no markings. I think it's some kind of a lid though, a milk glass. Looks like a blob beer. Oh, let's see what's going on. A little groundwater. You know, it's a tooled top. That's uh, a turn mold piece. That's got some good age though. I'd put this at about 1890. Here's the hall. Everything dated back to around the turn of the century. Got a decent variety. A couple of chemical bottles, medicines, a big liquor bottle beer and a champagne, an extract, some dinnerware, a bunch of prescription bottles, some glassware, mason jar, shoe polish, some of those milk glass containers and an ink. Well, there you have it. We'll get this thing filled back in. I'm toward the back of the lot on the south side. If you look close, you'll see I kicked some marks in the ground. I had probed down and hit some ashes and glass. That's a good indicator of an early site. We'll get this thing opened up. amazed at the amount of stuff in here. It's all just kind of intertwined and wedged here. I think if I get this liquor flask out, I'll be able to uh, loosen the rest. All right, that's a machine-made Eagle style, circa 1915. Oh, there we go. That's a prescription bottle. Uh, you know, embossing, you can see it would have had a paper label there on that front panel. Wow, this is unusual. Oh, it's got an eagle on a serpent. Chili powder. Uh, C-E-B, Zebhart, Gebhart, eagle on one panel. It's an early machine made piece. And then a uh, chili, chili powder. And then the front, I'd never seen one of these. Seems like it, uh, could be related to Mexico with the eagle on a serpent type scenario. All right. Okay, it's some kind of a drinking glass. It chips, so they threw it, but that's a really interesting pattern. It's pressed glass. Uh, it could have been like a malt shop type piece. Some kind of little paneled oil bottle. Sometimes these things are embossed. Uh, this one's SF, SF and Company. I would have had a paper label on it. Okay, this, yeah, just stuff everywhere here. Getting down into a use layer. Uh, it looks like some kind of shoe polish bottle. It's a tooled top, kind of a wide mouth Blake style. Another Eagle flask, early machine made, circa 1915. Huh. 
little prescription bottle. These need to start having embossing on them. Yeah, it's a, again, circa 1905 uh, tooled top piece. Some broken windows. <laughs> and a, a unbreakable comb. Sa Sandum? Sandum unbreakable. Didn't really live up to its name. All right, I think this is a bigger one. Okay, a machine made Eagle style flask. I believe that's a full quart. Oh wow, look at all this stuff. Got a few mason jar lids. Now, these will sometimes have the company name on them. Let's see, I know Boyd was the most popular. Nothing on this one. Nothing on that one. Yeah, they're all blanks, but they're all this, generally the same style, probably for a shoulder seal mason jar. Oh, a little candy dish lid. Uh, maybe we'll find the candy dish down here somewhere. We're not even through the topsoil, and we've got some pieces exposed. This looks like it could be some kind of pharmaceutical product. Uh, I can already tell it's a tooled top. Now, this is hard packed earth here. This is some really hard packed clay. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Definitely a pharmaceutical. No embossing on it, but that's a tooled top. I'd say this thing's 120 years old, maybe older. like some kind of medicine bottle let's see here okay it's a prescription bottle no embossing on it looks like it's a early machine made piece it still has some medicine inside of it There's a bowl, looks like a semi-porcelain piece. Sometimes these have a maker's mark. W.S. George, Radisson. I've dug this pattern before. This is a circa 1900 piece. or just been some kind of serving bowl, I suppose. Alright, well it's a mason jar, it's a drop day double loop, the top's broken off, that must have been why it was discarded. Looks like we're getting into some kind of trash layer, I'm also seeing ashes. The ground's starting to soften up a bit, but this has been a nightmare dealing with. Looks like a Paris style prescription bottle, uh, it's got some markings on the bottom. Uh, NBBG, I believe. It's a circa 1905 tool top piece. This ground is just brutal. I think we've got another piece down there. Uh oh, looks like, okay, an early machine made medicine. I've seen this before. O Cedar, made in USA. I believe it was a furniture polish of some sort. This would have had a paper label on it. Some broken stuff down there. Let's see, got a couple pieces here. Looks like a juice bottle. Sometimes these will say Welch's or Royal Purple. Those are some of the most popular brands of the time. This is early machine made circa 1915. Let's see here. 
Okay, it's an early machine made Eagle style flask. Uh, no embossing, again, circa 1915. I'm beginning to think this was the later pit used by the building here. Everything I'm finding is World War I era, and that's around the time Yankton got indoor plumbing. Let's see, genuine Boyd. Okay, there's a Boyd cap. Yeah, this was no doubt the most popular mason jar lid manufacturer. A little tool top prescription bottle. No embossing, circa 1905. Looks like another Eagle flask. Oh, wow. Red top. Ferdinand Westheimer and Sons, Cincinnati, Ohio, and St. Joseph, Missouri. This has a lot going on. I've seen these red top bottles before. It's a red top rye, I believe. This one's an early machine made piece. I'd put it at circa 1915. All right, let's see here. Okay, I have broken a machine-made eagle flask. Huh. Looks like a possible soda bottle. There's a... Okay, it's Pluto water. See that uh, kind of figure on the bottom? Almost looks like a devil-type figure. That was the advertisement for Pluto water. I think it was some kind of laxative product. This one's early machine made circa 1915. Look at all this stuff. <laughs> we need to get some embossed ones. I believe this is an Ober Oval style prescription bottle. Don't quote me on that though. It's got a tooled top, uh, graduated sides. I put this at 1908 to 1916 in that range. This is a big flask. <laughs> okay, the top's knocked off. This is one of the biggest Eagle style flasks I've dug. It was made by the Illinois Glass Company. It's a full quart. I've got like nine or 10 pieces exposed here. This pit is something else. It's just loaded. This clay, it's so hard packed here though. It's just been a nightmare working with. Okay, we got a tool top prescription bottle. It's got a reinforced lip. I believe they started uh, using those in 1908. It's like some kind of Vaseline container. Sometimes they're embossed, sometimes not. This one's not embossed. It's a machine made threaded top. Looks like some kind of chemical bottle here. broken. There's a lot of broken stuff in this pit. Okay, some kind of, okay, it's a threaded top. It could be some kind of stationary product. Could have held mucilage, glue, maybe ink or paste of some sort. Oh, another Paris style prescription bottle. No embossing, circa 1905. Oh, this is kind of cool. It's really light. I think it's some kind of perfume atomizer. See, there's some kind of a checkered pattern on it there. I think this could be closer to 1900. All right, 
here we've got a Whitmore shoe polish bottle from Boston. That's got a tooled top. I'd put this one at yeah, about 1905-1910. A little uh, machine-made homeopathic vial. These held all kinds of tinctures, uh, mainly little pills though. Oh wow. Okay, this, I believe, is an opium vial. I've always heard these called opium vials. I may have seen one with a different label on it, although generally I believe that's what they, these were used for. Oh, here we go. Another little uh, homeopathic vial. You know, this one... So that's some residue inside of it. Those may be broken down pills. I can't say for sure though. As you can see, I've pulled out a ton of stuff and I'm only a couple feet down. No end in sight. I've got more down here. Looks like some liquor flasks. Uh, all right, another uh, machine made Eagle style. Looks like a pint size. I see some embossing on this one. What do we have going on here? Okay, another one of those uh, red top rye bottles. This one's a... Uh, this one might be a tooled top. No, it's early machine made. I love the top design embossed on that. And another drinking glass. Again, this is like something you'd see in an old time malt shop or something. These are, these are really cool. I see some embossing on this one. Looks like some kind of patent medicine. Dr. Miles Restorative Nerving. Okay, that's a early machine made piece, uh, circa 1915. What's going on with this? Oh, wow, it's intact. Looks like an ironstone china bowl. KT and K granite ware. That's uh, Knowles, Taylor, and Knowles. I've dug a lot of these. That's amazing, it survived all these years. like a Mikado style liquor flask. This one's a tooled top, so the age is getting a little better. I'd put this one at 1905 to 1910. Looks like some kind of prescription bottle. NB and G on the bottom. I think I've dug these before. It's a Paris style, circa 1905. It is just loaded. Another prescription bottle. No embossing on this one. That same date range though. And it looks like a little uh, saucer to a child's tea set. Uh, likely children living here at the residence. Uh, what's this? Another uh, tool top Mikado style flask. No embossing. We're back at it again. Got too dark to film last night. So we'll pick up where we left off. I've got several pieces exposed. Looks like a, some kind of a mason jar and a uh, maybe apothecary of some sort. Let's see here. Okay, it's a ball mason jar, a drop day triple loop style, uh, early machine made. Some kind of prescription bottle, uh, NB and C or NB and G on bottom, tool top circa 1905. It's like a early machine made Eagle style liquor flask. Some kind of a Okay, PD and Company. That's Park Davison Company. This is a little uh, pharmaceutical type bottle. It's got a glass stopper. That's interesting. You usually only see that with toiletries. Another one 
another uh, prescription bottle. No embossing on this one. Same date range, circa 1905. And another uh, mason jar, canning jar lid. Uh, no embossing on this one, uh, early 1900s. Well, this one just flipped out. Looks like a, another machine made homeopathic vial, circa 1900. And some kind of early machine made chemical bottle. Could have been hydrogen peroxide or some kind of pharmaceutical. Oh wow, that's kind of cool. It's got some uh, lines on the sides, some kind of line pattern. It's a creamer of some sort, I believe. Oh, another Eagle flask. This one's a tooled top. The age is getting a little better. Now this might be intact. Now the ground's still decently hard packed down here. Let's see. Oh, look at that design. This is something. Looks like a semi porcelain plate. I don't see. Okay, it looks like iris. Okay, it's the iris pattern. I've seen this before. I can't tell you exactly what company made it, but uh, yeah, it's got that bird on it. That's really cool. It's like a mason jar here, but I've got it loose. All right, it's a ball. Drop day double loop. Early machine made piece. What's going on here? Got some kind of a prescription bottle made by the Western Bottle Manufacturing Company, circa 1905. Some kind of medicine or liquor flask. I think it's a liquor flask. Oh, it's got some beveled corners, tooled top. I'm into a solid use layer. There's plenty of bottles down here. There's oh, looks like some kind of ribbed jar of some sort. That's unusual. Looks like there's remnants of a metal cap on it. It's early machine made. And a prescription bottle. Looks like a crown oval, maybe a Dakota oval, has a tooled top. Oh, getting better age. Here's an Olympia style flask. These were patented in 1898. Looks like a paneled patent medicine. No embossing on this one. It's a tooled top, would have had a paper label on it. kind of jar. It looks like a food jar. It's early machine made. I don't see any embossing on it. It's a little wider mouth than you see on Vaseline containers. A liquor bottle. This one's a early machine made. I'd put it at circa 1915. Wow, so it's uh, broken, but this is a nice uh, semi-porcelain pitcher piece. Those flowers in the center are really cool. This uh, must have broken, so they discarded it. So into a solid use layer, there's stuff everywhere. It's like a tooled top Mikado style flask. That's a pint size. Uh, some kind of graduated oval 
prescription bottle. Got a reinforced lip. I'd put this in the 1908 to 1916 date range. And another Mikado flask, another pint. Wow, this is obviously broken, but that's an unusual color for a dish during that time. I don't dig anything in this color very often. It's glass, actually. Huh. A pitcher, it's got some uh, sheaf of wheat pattern on it. This is a utility piece, really heavy glass. Another Mikado flask, a uh, half pint on this one, no embossing. And another, circa 1905. Plenty to go, still into a solid use layer. Looks like a tool top Mikado style flask, circa 1905. So sticking out. It's a little uh, oil bottle, I believe. You can see remnants of a paper label, but there's no embossing. An early machine-made beer bottle. This would date it sometime after 1910 and before Prohibition. A little prescription bottle with some graduations on the side. No embossing, 1908 to 1916. Oh wow, you know, <laughs> I have no idea what this thing is. Some kind of a bulb. Doesn't appear to be broken. Uh, if anyone has any idea what this is, please drop a comment. This pitcher looks like it could be good. Bunch of dinnerware pieces in the way. Whoa! This is really something here. See some markings on the bottom. Conway Royal Semi Porcelain Wood and Sun, England. Now, this is a classic flow blue piece, so there's no doubt from the turn of the century. That's really something. couple pieces trying to fall out here. Looks like an unembossed beer bottle made by the American Bottle Company. That's a tooled crown top. Look at that. Ah, you know, there's a lot of kind of utilitarian stuff here, and this is a big pit. I'm wondering, this could have been a boarding house pit. Uh, it's too early to say for sure, though. I've got to see if this thing's intact. Look at that color. All the dinnerware in here is just something else. Okay, I think it's the other half to that, but look at that. It looks like it's uh, maybe hand stenciled. It's definitely flow blue. Uh, prescription bottle, uh, English style as the English in script at bottom. Looks like some kind of prescription bottle. It's a blue ribbon style, tooled top, graduated sides. Another Olympia style flask. That's an 1898 patent. And an English style prescription bottle. It's got English in script on bottom. What do we got here? Oh, a couple of them. 
an eagle style flask tool top and a tool top Mikado style the sides started falling in so I guess it's time to take some of these out it's like a tool top Rex oval style prescription bottle Oh wow, this thing is ornate. Salon Palmer on the uh, shoulder of it right there. This was a famous perfumer from New York. That's a really ornate piece. I got a big prescription bottle here. It's a graduated oval style, 16 ounce. A tool top Mikado style flask. And a tool top Eagle style liquor flask. And a Mikado. Again, a tool top. top eagle style flask. This bottom layer is absolutely packed. Here's a tool top prescription bottle, 12 ounce size. And a tool top eagle style flask. And another prescription bottle. It looks like a Rex Oval style, but there's no embossing on it. Some kind of a ball neck panel piece. Could be a medicine, could be an extract. Okay, a really ornate drinking glass. If you look close, you'll see some really cool pattern on it. That's uh, etched, I believe. I can't say I've ever dug anything like this. This could be really early. Here we go. An embossed uh, Yankton drugstore bottle from the drugstore of Walbaum and Asif. And a tool top eagle flask. And an Olympia style flask. just packed down here. All kinds of stuff. Another Eagle style liquor flask. Uh, New York Van Duzer. Van Duzer. Another uh, Eagle style liquor flask. And a prescription bottle. No embossing on that one. Uh, what do we have here? Lydia E. Pinkham's vegetable compound. It's full of groundwater. I find a lot of these. It was a female remedy, so there's likely a female living here in the household. And another prescription bottle made by the Western Bottle Manufacturing Company. And another prescription bottle. 
This one still has some contents in it. I'll make sure not to dump that out. The stuff usually reeks. I'm amazed at how much stuff is down here. A ball neck panel style bottle, either an extract or a medicine. Oh, here we go. Tone Brothers flavoring extracts, Des Moines, Iowa. All the stuff down here is filled with groundwater. It's dumping out all over my gloves. Another prescription bottle. Oh, Everite. Okay, I believe this was some kind of oil product uh, sold in prescription bottles. Huh. All kinds of prescriptions. Uh, some of these need to start being embossed circa 1905. Huh. Little, uh, maybe toiletry. No embossing, but it's a really heavy glass. Another prescription bottle. It's, it's almost a Philadelphia Oval, but a uh, not quite. Would have had a paper label on the front there. Some nice color on this thing. Oh, that's a heavy champagne bottle. Oh, this thing looks earlier. It's a turn mold piece, I believe. going on with this new a oh, patent applied for so some kind of patent applied for design it looks like it could be some kind of condiment container I I'm not sure a ketchup style top I'm in the final corner there's a few pieces oh, that's awesome it's a biscuit porcelain doll the arms and legs fell off, they would have been attached with a uh, metal wire, I believe. Saw some blue in here. Could it be? Okay, yeah, a little uh, Bromo Seltzer tooled top piece, uh, circa 1905. And a little machine made uh, condiment container, could have held uh, pickles, relish, And a prescription bottle. Oh, another uh, Everite, Everite oil, circa 1905. No way. Cement City Bottling Works, Yankton, South Dakota. We <laughs> got a hutch. That's awesome. This pit's done. This was something else. Everything dated back to around 1910. Got an amazing variety of pieces here. Some Vaseline containers, extracts, shoe polish, medicines, toiletries, old light bulb, homeopathic vials, canning jars, bunch of flow blue transfer wear, some other semi porcelain pieces. A bunch of drugstore bottles, including that Walbaum and Asseth. Some drinking glasses, pitchers, champagne bottle, beers, the sodas, including that Cement City Hutch, and a bunch of liquor flasks. This was one for the books. We'll get this thing filled back in.